HMS Fingal was designed and built as a merchantman by J&G Thompson Clyde Bank Iron Shipyard at Govan in Glasgow, Scotland, and was completed early in 1861. HMS Fingal was equipped with two vertical single-cylinder direct-acting steam engines, using steam generated by one flue tubular boiler. The engines drove the ship at a top speed of around 13 knots. The ship briefly operated between Glasgow and other ports in Scotland, for Hutchinson West Highland service before she was purchased in September 1861 by James D. Bullock, the primary foreign agent in Great Britain for the Confederate States of America, and Major Edward Clifton Anderson, Confederate Secretary of War. Bullock hired an English crew and captain and put out his destination as Bermuda and Nassau in the Bahamas. The ship reached Bermuda on November 2nd, and after leaving port on November 7th, Bullock informed the crew that the steamer's real destination was Savannah, Georgia, Confederate States of America. He offered to take anyone who objected to the plans to Nassau. However, all the crew agreed to join in the effort to run the Union blockade. Fingal was able to slip safely into the Savannah Eastery in a heavy fog on the night of November 12th without sighting any blockaders. The brothers Asa and Nelson Tift received the contract to convert the blockade runner into an ironclad in early 1862 with the name of Atlanta after the city in Georgia. This was largely financed by contributions from women of Savannah, Georgia. After the conversion, Atlanta was 204 feet long overall and had a beam of 41 feet. Atlanta now displaced 1,006 long tons and her speed was estimated at 7 to 10 knots. CSA Atlanta was armed with single banded 7 inch Brook rifles on pivot mounts at the bow and stern. CSA Atlanta was also armed with a 20 foot solid iron ram that was reinforced by a series of vertical steer bars. In front of the ram was a spar torpedo that carried 50 pounds of black powder on a wooden pole connected to an iron lever that could be raised or lowered by means of pulleys. On July 31, 1862, under the command of Lieutenant Charles H. McBlair, CSA Atlanta conducted her sea trials down the Savannah River towards Fort Pulaski. The ship proved to be difficult to steer, and the additional weight of her armor and guns significantly reduced her speed and increased her draft. She also leaked sufficiently, and her design virtually eliminated air circulation. One report said that it was almost intolerable on board the Atlanta, there being no method of ventilation, and the heat was intense. Attempts were made to fix the problems, and were at least partially successful in stopping many of the leaks. The ship was commissioned on November 22nd and became the flagship of Flag Officer Josiah Tatnell, commander of the Naval Defenses of Georgia. Under pressure from Secretary of the Navy Stephen Mallory to engage the blockading ships, Tatnell attempted to engage them before any ironclads arrived on January 5, 1863, but Army engineers could not clear the obstacles blocking the channel in a timely manner. It took another month to actually clear the obstacles, and two monitors arrived before the end of January. Nonetheless, Tatnell attempted to pass through the obstacles during high tide on February 3rd but high winds prevented the water from rising enough to allow the ship to do so. After CSA Atlanta successfully passed through them on March 19th, Tatnell planned to attack the Union base at Port Royal, South Carolina, while the monitors were attacking Charleston, South Carolina. Tatnell was forced to retreat when three monitors augmented the defense at Port Royal. Dissatisfied with Tatnell's perceived lack of aggressiveness, Stephen Mallory replaced Tatnell as commander of the Savannah Squadron later that month with Commander Richard L. Page. Page, in turn, was relieved in May by Commander William H. Webb. Webb demonstrated his aggressiveness when he attempted to sortie on the first spring tide after taking command. But CSA Atlanta's forward engine broke down after he had passed the obstructions and the ship ran aground. She was not damaged, although it took over a day to pull her free. He planned to make another attempt on the next full tide, rejecting Mallory's idea that he wait until the nearly completed ironclad CSA Savannah was finished before his next attempt. Union Rear Admiral Samuel F. DuPont, commander of the South Atlantic Blockading Squadron, had ordered the monitors USS Weehawken and USS Nahant into Wausau Sound. In the early evening of June 15th, Commander Webb began his next attempt by passing over the lower obstructions in the Wilmington River and spent the rest of the night coaling. He moved forward the next evening 
to a concealed position within easy reach of the monitors for an attack early the following morning. Commander Webb planned to sink one of the monitors with the spar torpedo and then deal with the other one with the guns. The gunboat CSS Isangdaga and the tugboat Resolute were to accompany him to tow one or both of the monitors back to Savannah, Georgia. A lookout aboard USS Weehawken spotted CSA Atlanta at 410 on the morning of June 17th. When the later ship closed to within about one and a half miles of the two Union ships, she fired one round from her bow gun that passed over USS Weehawken and landed near USS Nahant. Shortly afterwards, CSA Atlanta ran aground on a sandbar. She was briefly able to free herself, but the pressure of the tide pushed her back onto the sandbar. This time, Commander Webb was unable to get off and the monitors closed the range. When USS Weehawken, the leading ship, closed to within 200 to 300 yards, she opened fire with both of her guns. The 279mm shell missed, but the 381mm shell struck the ironclad above the port middle gun port, penetrating her armor, and broke the wooden backing behind it, spraying splinters and fragments that disabled the entire gun crew and half the crew of the bow gun. The next shot from the 270mm Dahlgren gun struck the upper hull and started a small leak. By this time, DSA Atlanta had been able to fire only seven shots, none of which hit either Union ships. USS Weehawken and USS Nahant were able to freely maneuver into positions from which the CSS Atlanta's narrowing gun ports would not allow her to reply, and the damage already inflicted from the former ship made further resistance futile. Commander Webb surrendered his ship within 15 minutes of opening fire. CSA Atlanta was easily pulled free by the Union ships and she reached Port Royal under her own power. Not badly damaged, she was repaired and bought by the Union Navy. The ship retained her name and was commissioned again on February 2, 1864, rearmed with a pair of 150-pound Parrot rifles in the bow and stern and 100-pound Parrot rifles amidship. The USS Atlanta was assigned to the North Atlantic Blockading Squadron and spent most of her time stationed up the James River where she could support operations against Richmond, Virginia. After the end of war in April, USS Atlanta was decommissioned in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania on June 21st, 1865 at League Island. She was sold to Sam Ward on May 4th, 1869 and subsequently delivered to representatives of Haiti. On December 8th, the ship was briefly seized by the Customs Service possibly for violations of neutrality laws, as she had just loaded four large guns and a number of recruits for the forces of Sylvian Salniev, president of Haiti, who was embroiled in a civil war. Atlanta was released and sailed to Port de Prince three days later. She broke down in Delaware Bay and had to put in at Chester, Pennsylvania for repairs. The ship, now renamed Triumph, departed on December 18, 1869. The ship never made it to Haiti as it vanished en route. If you liked the video, please press the like button. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. You can follow me on Twitter and on Instagram, links in the description. And if you want to financially support the channel, please do so by going over to my Patreon page. And with that said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching, and I bid you farewell.